The following is a presentation of Sports Groove TV and Heritage Sports Radio Network, the voice of HBCU Sports. Along with Lou Holder, I'm Mark Gray. What a fantastic day it was. You know, Howard's homecoming is always the biggest event on the East Coast. But today, it was as much about the football team as it was about all the other stuff that's going on. Signature win for Coach Harrell. I mean, this is a gentleman who was part of an undefeated team in 1993, came back and automatically has shot through the expectations of, of a lot of people. But when he was hired, at his uh, press conference, he said that homecoming and that nation's classic in RFK were two games that he circled on his calendar. Two for two, Mark. It, two for two. But it, it does a lot for uh, for the for the team, for the coaches, for the um, for the president, Dr. Rabo, you know, who wants to walk around with his head high. For Skip Perkins, my AD, who does a great job as far as helping me build this program. I mean, it, a win. I mean, a win helps everything, but this type of wins gets a and homecoming. It does a lot for the program. How about that? Now, he wanted to beat Morehouse at RFK. They did that back in September. And here, beating North Carolina a and for the first time since 2007 was a marvelous effort. And, you know, quarterback Greg McGee wow. wears a sacred number here at Howard University. Number seven was worn by Jay Walker, who won a national championship in 1993. It was won by Ted White who won a championship in 1996. I don't want to burden that guy with unfair expectations, but it's clear that he is a star and the face of this program for the next four years. You know what, I think he can handle it because you would think that your first homecoming game, you'd be full of nerves. I didn't see it. And at the end of the day, all his numbers aside, the number that is the most important, he did not turn the ball over today. And it wasn't like he was just managing the game. He made plays when the plays were there. We talk about the number seven here at Howard is a sacred number, and you get to wear that number. There's enormous burden and responsibility that goes with that, but you seem like you're up to the challenge. Do you relish that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm up for any challenge. Number seven is just another number to me. It's just I respect it. I, I really respect There's all type of pitchers, Coach White, everyone who, who actually wore the number. It means a lot. It means a lot, but... I'm up for the challenge. They gave it to me, it's up for the challenge. Now, let's talk about the flea, Gary Harrell, All-American wide receiver here at Howard. He's been a tremendous assistant coach throughout his career, but now as a leader of Howard's program. We talk about the face on the field being the young quarterback, Greg McGee, but what do you make of the job that Coach Flea is doing right now? What I saw was not the first, second, and the fourth quarter when they had momentum. The coaching that I saw was in the third quarter where they had a couple of miscues in their special teams and how he had his arms around those players saying, hey, look, we're in this together. That's the sign of a true coach, and that's how I feel where you feel that Gary Harrell is making a difference because he won't let these guys get down for too long. But I feel good, you know, about my team being able to respond. When they make a big play, we came back and we strike a blow as well. But, you know, coming, coming out of halftime, we was up 13 nothing. We got a flag because the band um, got delayed a game. That kind of took some momentum away. But, you know, you're going to get those calls, and you got to make sure your team is ready to play. Two big games for both of these programs coming up next week. North Carolina A&T goes to Norfolk State, where they'll take on the Spartans. Both of those teams have one loss in the conference, so that effectively is an elimination game. And you've got South Carolina State coming into Howard. If Howard can run the table against the Carolinas, I think you're talking about an enormous stroke of credibility to this program and Coach Harrell's first year. Hey, I, I think that everything right now to me is gravy for Coach because like you said, he didn't even get a chance to have a full cycle of his recruits. You mentioned the fact that he has those Miami connections going down to Florida to get his team. This is just the beginning for Howard. This is just the beginning. All this stuff is gravy right now. And homecoming is like no other here at the place they call the Mecca. It certainly was. We had the likes of Boris Kajo. There was Olympic champion David Oliver. We saw Lance Gross, a Howard alum. It was truly a wonderful event as the Bison are a 35-28 victor on the, ho the first homecoming for Coach Gary Harrell here as head man leading the Bison program. Lou, this is our, what, fourth homecoming? Yeah, and it gets better and better. This is the best one. This certainly this was. Is the best one. Had everything. At the end of the day, it led to a Howard Bison victory. 35-28. Bison now above the 500 mark in the MEAC. For Lou Holder, I'm Mark Gray. 
We'll see you later on down the road at the ballpark. This is the man. This is the man. This has been a presentation of Sports Groove TV and Heritage Sports Radio Network, the voice of HBCU Sports.